Monte Carlo has played host to some of the most incredible moments in the history of the EPT. Hang on. Come on. Selena calls and we are off to the races. It's an eight on the river. It's quads fire Dwyer. No! And it's over. Goodbye. Brian Nano is the champion. Ian Bendix said he was a gambler, and the story checks out. Spain has been waiting for its first win on the EPT, and the wait is over! Oh, oh my word! Oh my god, he's folded! What's wrong? Nicolas Dumont is an EPT champion. Hello everyone, welcome to Monaco and the PokerStars and Monte Carlo Casino EPT. This is the second European Poker Stop of 2019 and we're picking up the action here on day two of the main event. I am James Hartigan, alongside me, Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. I don't want to say Monaco's expensive, but yesterday my bar receipt was printed in landscape. <laughs> So here we are inside the most beautiful poker room in the world, the Room of the Stars. And we pick up the action with around 920 total entries and around 340 players remaining. And coming into day two, these are the chip leaders. We have a guy who made the final table of the national championship here in Monaco, Sylvain Mazza as the overall chip leader. Second in chips, Ludovic Geilek from the UK, Sam Grafton. The Squid, third in chips with more than 160 bigs. Some other names you recognize in the top 10 as well, Joe. Like Amra Kakmak. I was thinking more of Julian Martini, runner up in the PokerStars Players Nona Hold'em Championship, and a guy we saw in that opening montage, Thomas Yazonis. He made the final table of this event last year, and he got bluffed in spectacular style by the online qualifier, Otvam. Otvam. <laughs> Danger, Yazonis. So we're picking up the action at the start of level 11. The blinds will be 800, 1600, with a big blind ante of 1600. The plan today is to play five full levels, but our major ambition, our ultimate quest, is to get into the money. And we'll have the payouts confirmed a bit later on today. Let's check out some of the players arriving inside the poker room for the start of play. That is Charlie Carroll wearing very interesting attire. You said it was going to be a meaty main event. There it was. Jan Bendik was the main event winner back in 2016. And I think he was wearing that jacket. Everyone's favorite divorced it uncle. Yeah. Antonius, nice. Antonius. You're gonna be nice to More meet. meat for you. <laughs> Sharing a table with Maria Konnikova. A lady. There is the squid, Sam Grafton, third in chips at the start of day two. Wonder if he has any tips for us. Now, this is a really fun table. Sadly, it can't be the feature table because Aww. it's the first to break. Sam Greenwood, <laughs> Fatima Maria de Melo, and the PSPC champion, Ramon Kalilias. Mr. Boxes. So we'll keep tabs on all those guys and we'll follow some of the other famous faces in the field. But our primary focus is obviously going to be on our feature table. We are headlined by the newest member of Team Pro, Kaladu So. He's a little bit on the short side, just shy of 30 big blinds. Um, Kaladu won the main event in Prague, Joe, in 2017. Uh -huh. And 12 months later, it was Paul Michaelis from Germany who won the Prague main event. So we've got back-to-back -back Prague main event winners at our feature table. Is it bad that day. I have no recollection of handing Paul Michaelis a trophy? No, it would be accurate. We've also got Zorlu Ur. How much? 43 big blinds <laughs> to start the day. He was a finalist in Barcelona back in 2016. The older Ur? The older Ur rather than the younger Ur. <laughs> uh, and no more nails. We've got Lars Bonding with a 28 big blind stack. More like Lars Blast from the past. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to day two of EPT Monte Carlo. 
We start on level 11, small blind 800, big blind 1600 with an ante of 1600. So 8, 16, 16. I'd like to wish you all the best of luck and dealers. Shuffle up and deal, please. So here we go. Back to the stage and Cal do so. Caldu's raise is going to get defended. And Caldu opened with ace four on the button. It's the other Prague champion, Paul Michaelis, who's defended the big blind with ace six. And both players have paired their kickers. Michaelis also with the nut flush draw. Looks like Michaelis is going to lead here with his pair of sixes and his nut flush draw. At first, I would have been in favor of just sort of trying to get to showdown, but with the ace of clubs in his hand, absolutely understand a bet. 3,200 apiece, and oh, that's bad news for Kaladu. That is really bad news. Two pair for both players. Michaelis with the dominating two pair, checks it. This might be so long. Well, he's got 38K behind. There's nearly 16K in the middle. It goes for one third pot, 5,100. All of his sizing has been pretty small. Yeah. the raise. Ooh. That is not small. 17,800. That's a bold play to raise two pair on the river here. I don't think it is that bold. I think this is one of those spots where really good players are going to know that they can't give up on the value of just calling with two pair. Even on a straighty, flushy board? It's just you don't really expect someone to have flopped a flush. And Kaladu called the raise. So loses a significant pot and drops down to the 12 big blind mark. <laughs> Danger so. No. Folded to Stefan Heitzman. Living Beijing. Six thousand seven hundred from Heitzman. We've only caught one of his cards. The six of spades. Kaladu So's picked up queens and is all in for his last twelve bigs. Oh no! <laughs> the sickest <laughs> race of all developing. The classicest <laughs> of all races is on the cards as Wang reshoves gets a fold from Michaelis, and I imagine we'll lose the original razor as well. And the floor man is uh, stacking for him. <laughs> what can he possibly have that's worth thinking about? Another six, I guess. I mean, it's all into call. <laughs> You've opened. There's been a shove and a reshove. And in the very first few hands, he still had the penalty from last time. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Just like you're sitting on the side, <laughs> watching us play. <laughs> that was hilarious. It was fun playing with him, though. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you what's going through his mind because over one car and I'd be thinking, not one. for this long, but I'd think about this too. You're thinking you can triple up. You're thinking, oh, I just have to hit a six. There is no way you are not crushed by Maybe one I'm of these two hands. There's ace king and ace queen, no. ace king and king queen. And all I got to do is survive a flip between two other people. I can triple up, James. 
That's three times as much, nearly. As king? Yeah, one of them has ace king, but the other has queens. He knows he's folding anyway. He's not. Is it analytical work in finance for you? I don't know. Number system. Wow, a two minute decision. <laughs> Also, I'm going to look like a real jerk when he has like a six of spades here. <laughs> he doesn't even have pocket sixes. I think it's really good. And a lot of people in finance love to play poker as well. It doesn't really matter whether it's a six, a pair of sixes, six, seven suited. It should have been in the muck a long time ago. But I appreciate where you're coming from, Joe, and saying these. Oh, there it is. Did he just call? <laughs> he sure did. Um, OK. I'm slightly confused. Six coming. I thought that that was going to be a classic race, but instead we've got a third man in the room. And they were black sixes, James. You can understand now, surely. No. I genuinely can't. No, because he had pocket sixes, but they were the same color. <coughs> so, you know. Well, uh, Heitzman is at risk, and so is at risk. Could see a double KO here if Wang can spike an ace or a king. I'm so sorry that a six is coming, guys. I should probably just leave the room right now. I'm, I'm, I apologize now. This is so gross. Um, it's just, we've all been in this situation before with Queens, and you're just like, WTF, but I'm so sorry about the six. Probably on the flop. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Sometimes you Why just is it getting up? have a feeling. No, you get up he when you it. see you're up against queens. It's a victory lap. You sit down again when the king hits, the six hits the flop. It is a victory lap. Poor Caldi So loses to both hands. Unless a queen hits the river. So it's a full so house gross. for Heitzman, <laughs> and Caladu So is eliminated during the first level of day two of the Monte Carlo main event. Rigged. A very bizarre tank from Heitzman, arguably a bizarre decision from Heitzman, but he is rewarded with a six on the flop, gets a near triple up, and we lose Caladu So. See you at the final table, Stefan Heitzman. Let's check in on Mike Sir Watts Mike. Watson in a hand against the PSPC champ Ramon Kalilis. We're on the turn here. The Jack 10 8 3 board. Ramon bets 10k, gets a call from Sir Watts, and that is the ace of clubs. So we have a flushy straighty board now. And Selena Lynn's husband is there. <laughs> started playing. <clears throat> Watson checks. So reminder that Ramon's bet on the term was 10,000. Oh, Ramon is breathing kind of heavy, yeah. Looks like he's trying to keep those breaths shallow. that neck pulse. So that's 15,000. Uh, out of a stack of not a lot of thousands. on the river. I like him for a flush here, having seen none of the action. Mike Watson folds. 
championship for part two are on. $5.1 million he won in the Bahamas. And the man he beat heads up at the PSPC is the current ship leader here in Monte Carlo. Julian Martini has a stack of 480K. Now the average right now is less than 100K. So the chip leader has five times the turning average with 280 players remaining on day two. Well, we started the day with the newest member of Team Pro on our main stage. Sadly, we've lost Caladuso from the main event. But the good news is we have two PokerStars pros at our new feature table. We have got Selena Lin. We have got Fatima Maria de Melo. We have also got a former Monte Carlo champion in Nicola Schwiti. We've also got Mustafa Kanit as well. Okay, well, action folded to Kanit. I wouldn't. I do that in. Mustafa once said that deuces never loses. <coughs> the raise is to 4,000 and action is on Fatima in the big blind. <laughs> <laughs> I can count. One About 70-ish. Huh? 70 total. 70? Yeah. It looks smaller than that. This is 50. Wow. Way to cut a guy down to size, Fatima. And she just defends, just a call. Deuces are still ahead on that flop. And once again, Fatima improves, spiking an ace on the turn. Interesting to see if Canada wants to start bluffing with this hand now, targeting some sixes and trees to fold, or if he's just going to be happy to take the showdown. I think if we see one bet, we're likely to see multiple bets. <coughs> Four and a half K each. Reckon this goes check, check. No, I think Khan is going to find a f second a barrel here. I don't think he gets the bet once because the sixes, the trees, the weaker tens all get an easy river decision. It's going to get called very quickly, though. Twenty k in the middle, and he bets eleven and a half thousand, so just over half pot. I don't think Fatima is ever going to do anything other than just call here, and I don't think we're ever going to see a raise. Just taking a little moment, see what's going on, but we'll see a call. It is harder for kind of have too many bluffs because you'd expect hands like queen jack king queen jack nine suited when they're wrapped around the 10 to just continue on the flop so he does need to find some bluffs with hands like this which not all opponents will but against a player so good so tricky as Canada, i think you just always have to call on this occasion deuces do loses fatima wins another pot and is now playing more than 80 big blinds with 163k. Kings for Peter Danielson. Imagine how happy he'll be with this one. Alexei Mizhenkov has ace four suited in the small blind. Wow, aces. What a cooler for Danielson. I 
what a great spot for Fatima. There's been a raise, there's been a three bet. And she's sitting there with the aces in the big. There's, wow, the quickest all-in of all time, and there's nothing that Danielson can do about it. Mazhenkov gets out of the way. Fatima snap calls. And a horrible cooler for Peter Danielson as he runs kings into aces. It is the nation of domination. I think that guy's uh, working for you. Uh, not yet. <laughs> the flop is 10 tray deuce, and clubs don't help Danielson. Fatima has the ace of clubs in her hand. I am better than kings now. You're better than kings now. A pocket 10. <laughs> So no, Danielson no, drawing to two outs, king. sneeze, oh. hit a king Her on the river to survive. They better shape. What a brand for you sometimes. Close but no cigar. So Peter nope. Danielson eliminated by oh. Fatima oh. DeMelo. Cool. Okay. Good game. Good luck. Don't try to hug me at five. Fold it around to Selena on the button with a very strong looking ace queen suited. 25 big blinds, probably hoping that she'll be able to get in here and she might have a customer with the two sixes. Mzhenkov in the small blind with this small pocket pair. With Adriana, you never have a problem. Well, that was the coach who did it, I think. Yeah, sure. Won't be surprised to see him re raise on the larger side here and commit to the all in. <laughs> question. Because everyone is different. We're really different. 14. Four raises make it 14,000. Five fold. Three bet to 14k. Action back on Selena. I'm always looking for the Let's go. Shoving a Let's call go. and we're off to the races. Flip the coin. I've got your hand. Sorry, my friend is not in person. I'm looking for him. No problem. <laughs> I think the queen is coming. Queen for the queen. I think it's definitely a little bit personal. I have already a queen. We hold or be folded. Okay. Mm. He wouldn't stay. I am not stay. I am for the queen. I fold the ace. Good, <laughs> Selena, the player at risk, God, and the, the player who's currently so behind. <laughs> How much it takes to see a flop? Queen ball! <laughs> All hearts. Six is holding. Jack? Jack? Jack. Six, six is <laughs> Jack of Clark. <coughs> okay, Queen then. Punish. <laughs> That's the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to be fair, Jack, you didn't want it, you know? Now try to call the six, good luck. <laughs> All my energy this is man. in no six. This man. <laughs> We're gonna be deep together, I feel it. We're gonna take every chips. Oh, Double wow. Queen. Ooh. Slight overkill. Survive that. It's just the beginning. Just We're gonna be final table together. I feel it coming. I feel it. I see all the chips over here. Easy money. <laughs> Selena moves over the 50 big blind oh. mark. Wait, 50,000. 50 is a lot. Oh, I'm back. You are. Okay, let's hand things over to Toby. Let's find out what's going on with the prize pool. Okay, main event players, we have a confirmed prize pool for you. We had 922 entries into EBT Monte Carlo, generating a total prize pool of 
471 700 euros. We're going to be paying 135 places. 135th will be going home with 8,800. And the winner of EPT Monte Carlo will be going home with 827,700 euros. Thank you. Oh, I love the golf applause for Toby Stone as he confirms <laughs> that 135 players are going to get paid in this year's Monte Carlo main event. A min cash is worth 8,800 euros. A reminder, this is a 5K buy-in event. The winner, 827,700 euros plus the EPT trophy. Round to Nicolas Schwiti, who is on the button with Queens. Both players pretty deep here, but I think with a hand as strong as Queens, you are probably going to want to re-raise. Just going to call, though. Definitely think it's reasonable to do. And can it with the suited King Trace going to come along. It's a three-way to the flop. Jack, Jack, six. Trips for Rufenacht. Sweetie with an overpair to the board and can it with the flush draw. Rufenacht, very happy to continue. One bet, 6,500. <coughs> 6,500 into 16,500. I were my hormones, but uh, no, I honestly like it's six balls. Very interesting spot for Canada here. Obviously, only starts the hand with about 18, 19 big blinds, flops the second on flush draw. But when he sees a bet on a call, he's got to be somewhat fearful that at least one of his opponents is going to have a jack right now. But he does check raise all in. How does Rufenach respond to this? Just call? Reshove? I think he's probably got to just call here. I call. Calls. And what do you do if you're Nikola Shuiti? At this point, I just think it's too likely that either can it or Rufenach has a jack. It's not an easy fold to make, particularly given the price that you're getting right now. It feels awful if your opponent has pocket nines, pocket tens, and Canada had shoved with a flush draw and you end up folding the best hand. But I think it's so unlikely that one of your opponents doesn't have a jack at this point. Problem as well is that the longer he takes here, the less likely it is that he's going to have the jack, and there's still a lot of chips in play. So Shweeti makes, makes the... another disciplined fold, Fenton, and we get the showdown. Can it a three to one dog and looking for a diamond? Kind of not just call it for a diamond, diamond the but the diamond. seven of diamonds. It's okay, don't give a shit. So good. <laughs> <laughs> one more, one less. Not for a hand, like my friendship worth more. Just a hand. Just poker. No diamond on the turn. And there are some Six outs one time. Out that would give Rufenacht a full house, so only six cards can save Mustafa Kanet from elimination. That is not one of them. Good game. Kanet is KO'd. Run. I three, but I save you, Mustafa. We 
are going to the outer tables. And it's a hand between Patrick Antonius and Connor Beresford. Beresford has bet 32,000, and Patrick has been in the tank for some time. Time. And Diamond sounds like the clock's just been called, Fenton. Time has been called, so you have 30 seconds to make your decision from now. So the board is Jack 10, 10, 7, deuce. No flush possible. Patrick running out of time. Five, four, Five second countdown. Three, two, Patrick calls. Connor Beresford tables ace nine for ace high. Patrick tables fours. What a hero call. Nice call. Wow. is a hero. Patrick, you are impressive. <laughs> Thanos, super villain. <laughs> hero, it's really a matter of perspective. Year of Romania makes it 4,500, nine, eight of hearts. Fatima folds ace jack, looks like Nick Schweedy somehow wakes up with a slightly better hand than that. Ace, queen, and flops top pair. Gut shot for Duree. You would imagine that Duree wants to continue here, has nine high. Little to no showdown. Got himself a good shot, some backdoor hearts. I'm playing against a range in a big blind that's gonna have a lot of hands to live just with the flop. We can yeah. see the that this is not one of those times though. Yeah. That's 4,500. the continuation bet. And of course, Shweedy calls. Six checks. Top pair, second best kicker. That's just I don't really, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Finton. No, I was just gonna say, I don't really mind a uh, second barrel here. You start to put a lot of pressure on your opponent if they have a 10, they pretty much have to fold a six always. Believe it or not, that is exactly what I was gonna say. I believe you, I've been impressed. Then that's 16,000. I think your situation hasn't changed all that much from the flop in that you still have only nine high. Uh, and, you know, you're, you're never going to win this hand at showdown. So why not take another stab at it? The question is, Joe, when he gets called here, which he will with the ace queen, are you willing to fire it off on the river? I am willing to admit this is a major leak in my game, but I am not willing to fire it off on the river almost ever. And I, think I reckon that, that you're just saying that for image, Joe. I reckon <laughs> you're always bluffing the river. I'm so bad at bluffing the river. Six balls. I'm really, really good at semi-bluffing. I am terrible at actual bluffing, especially when it comes to putting my entire tournament life on the line. It's not the most ideal river card to pull the trigger on. I reckon if we've seen a 10, a jack, a queen, the 9-8 would always go for it on the five of spades. It's such a brick. If your opponent has an ace, it's very hard to make a fold at this point with all the draws bricking. But we've got nine high. We've no clubs in our hand. You might be tempted to go for it here.
Well, he has gone for it. 41,000 into a pot of 53,000 on a board that's going to be very difficult to get top pair to fold. Yeah, I don't think he's trying to target a hand like ace queen to fold. He's looking to make a ten fold, maybe a weak ace. I feel like tens would have folded already. And it certainly did not get an ace to fold. Fintan, you want to take a look at some of the famous faces in the field? Absolutely. Show me around the room, Joe. The first guy, he's very famous for selling his pieces. Ryan Reese, of course, with his Reese's Pieces. You wanna, should I keep going? It's gotta be tough. There's your boy, Ludovic Gylik. I'll stop. Timothy Adams, just won a single day high roller here for like half a million or something. Christoph Vogel saying, you know him. You know him. He does not have his hoodie on. Still covered up that neck. Martin Zadenia. Where's the other one? I just see one one of them. No, anyway. Sam uh, Grafton. Oh, I'm going to be quiet. quiet. I couldn't see him in the tables. Sam is never yeah, quiet. So I'm coming out of the bathroom. Uh, I went up to him. I'll give you a... <laughs> I just cut him off mid-sentence. And, of course, uh, Thomas Yazonis, the guy who... Got bluffed last year with the seven deuce hand. Remember that? Okay, all in on the call, guys. Let's see. Him. Whoa, and we've got a hand. Shows Maria queens, Konnikova queens. all in and at risk. Is this is that sick ace king versus queen's race. And a queen on the flop. Oh, no. Maria was not at risk. It's, it's here on top. I didn't do it. She's left okay. with 20K, though. Sixty-one. Might as well. I mean, 61. at risk. She wasn't all in. Oh, I hate that ace king versus queen's flip. Any solution for that, Fenton? I think everyone should just get their money back. Just chop it up. Yeah, it's two huge hands. Just be like, whoa, whoa all right, let's New take deck it easy. on nine, please. Action folding around to Selena Lynn. Have not heard much from her lately. And she's going to take this opportunity to open from the cutoff with Jack Nine. Will it get through? They never get through, and they ain't getting through this time. Shweedy defends. And flops a 10. Selena continues for slightly less than her pre-flop raise. And we know Shweedy is unlikely to fold for just one bet. There's the call. Turn is the five of spades. Neither player holds a spade. Check, check on the turn, ace on the river. It's going to be very hard for Selena to start bluffing on a repeat ace now. Probably just going to have to give up. Does in fact fold to the bet from Nicholas Sweetie. Tell us about your new apartment, Fent, and what are some of the features? Um, terrible internet. Okay. A hotel beside me that actually has a tiny bit of construction going on. Um, 
that's 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 all i got so far but no it's lovely everything will be fine joe it's all going to be okay you um, must have chosen it for a reason though yeah no i love it um it's got a, a nice sea view oh cool uh, it has has two two balconies up the top one for entertaining people with nice barbecue so yeah i'm real happy once once the internet's solved i'll be very very content i understand that look as a person that does not require the internet for my living uh not having the internet is incredibly anxiety inducing so i can only imagine not being able to work and not being able to to get back out there uh would really drive a person crazy so i can understand why it'd be a a, a big thing on your mind uh, it's okay though we got backup internet so I, I can i can be on a call or i can play poker i just it's when you're streaming, you just need pretty right. fast, steady connection. I mean, the fact that islands have internet at all is pretty impressive. Like, nobody knows how they do it. Just like, I don't know how you flop trip jacks here with jack eight, but sometimes, sometimes you do. Selena Lynn was the original razor. She continues here into two opponents with her pocket sixes, which would often be the best hand. Just got pretty unlucky here. Jenkoff folds. Pretty tough to disguise your hand when you don't fold on this flop. Yeah, once you call, it's very hard at the stock that for you to have anything worse than a four. And a lot of the time you will end up with a jack. I really admire players that can just take their time here. Have you already went all in, high fived everybody on the table on the lap? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like this check. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like when it's like a dry board like this and it's a pair board, like no matter what I do is the most obvious thing ever. Like it's obvious when I don't have it. It's obvious when I do. I think you got to give yourself some more credit, Joe. I think it's all in your head. I don't think people can pick up on tells as fantastically well as you reckon so. No, I don't even think I have tells. It's just the situation so obvious. Like it's a, it's a paired dry board and I'm betting like clearly I have it. <laughs> it's... Except for when I don't have it, and then it's very clear that I don't. <laughs> like, I, d I don't know how to explain it. It's just not, it's not even a tell thing. It's just they always know. But Selena has not insta-folded. I think against a large size, we would have seen a fold, but against a smaller side, maybe she thinks occasionally her opponent could be value betting a worse hand as well. He was not value betting a worse hand. All right, we've got an all-in and a call. Deray open to 5,500. Rufinock folded in between, but Selena Lynn stuck it in with ace, eight of clubs. We are flipping. He knows. Like Tinder versus Bumble, one of these two hands has a slight mathematical advantage. 
We got a club in the door. Options. Sixes are holding for now. Some good turns. <laughs> Potentially for Selena. That's a good turn. That's a good an turn. An ace, a queen, or an eight. Tournament life on the line. One card to come. It's a seven, however. Okay. Selena game. Lynn. Good game, Selena. Yeah, good game, guys. Is no longer Selena in. She is out. Can I go? Thank you. They do well. Eliminated way far from the money. Still 50 places to go. Nice playing with you guys. And Maria Konnikova is not going on break. She is going on perma break from this tournament. She is eliminated. So we're roughly midway through day two, Joe, and we've got around 165 players remaining. At the main stage, it's the two Lebanese players who are dominating, Jeffrey Hakim and Nicola Shweeti. Shweeti, one of our former champs, is the chip leader at the feature table with close to 100 big blinds. The shortest stack at the feature table, Christoph Vogelsang, with around 27 big blinds. With the bubble approaching here at the PokerStars and Monte Carlo Casino EPT.